A scary scene Friday night as a train strikes a car stuck on the tracks in Scotts Bluff. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, there were no injuries Friday night when a collision occurred between a BNSF train and a car. Scottsdale police say the incident occurred around 9 p.m. when 25-year-old Alicia Monson's car became stuck on the railroad tracks near East Overland. Monson, relying on her GPS, attempted to turn around but got trapped on the tracks. She exited the vehicle before it was struck by an approaching train. Emergency services responded, closing several crossings for nearly three hours. Fortunately, no one was harmed, though Monson's car suffered significant damage. Police have completed an accident report and no citations have been issued. Well, a Scotchwolf man has pleaded guilty to a charge in connection with a fatal August motorcycle accident. 24-year-old Quentin Beery was behind the wheel during a crash when a Colorado motorcyclist died when his motorcycle collided with a car, making a left turn at the intersection of 23rd Street and Broadway. Beery and passenger Angelina Palamo both fled from the scene but were later apprehended. In addition to the Class 3 felony guilty plea of leaving the scene of a death accident, Beery also pleaded guilty to a charge of distribution of methamphetamine following a Wing Drug Task Force investigation where he sold narcotics to a CI. Sentencing in both cases has been set for this Friday in Scotts Bluff County District Court. And all charges have been dropped against the man arrested in connection to a July forcible sexual assault investigation involving a 16-year-old girl. 21-year-old Christian Matute Acosta was arrested as the primary suspect in this case and was charged with first-degree forcible sexual assault. According to court records, the victim told investigators during a forensic interview that she objected as she was forcefully held down and sexually accosted by two males. Charges were dismissed against a second suspect back in August. Last week in district court, prosecutors filed a motion to dismiss the case against Matute Acosta with prejudice. We'll have more news right after this. The journey of a dream becoming reality. When we're young, a dream develops into a passion. That passion continues to manifest and grows as you do. It becomes all you want to do and all you want to be. It gives you direction. It drives you. Then your dream has become a reality. When that dream is ready to be reality, Platte Valley Bank will be with you every step of the way. Fly United Airlines operated by SkyWest with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. United is dedicated to going the extra mile for you with daily flights to and from Denver along with a commitment to excellent service. Reserve your flight today and remember United miles can be earned and redeemed with your flights. While at the airport, stop and enjoy authentic Italian food at Roma Italian Restaurant. Plus, Hertz Thrifty Car Rental is there for your car rental needs. Make life easier, relax, and get on board with Western Nebraska Regional Airport. Welcome back. By year's end, Mayor Jeannie McCarrigan will be the most senior member of the Scotts Bluff City Council. Last Thursday was the deadline for incumbents to file for office, and neither Jordan Colwell or Angela Scanlon filed the required paperwork with the county clerk's office. Two years ago, council members Betsy Vidlack and Matt Solomon won elections to their seats, and McCarrigan was re-elected. As of the deadline, non-incumbent Charles Leiske was the only person to have filed for one of the two contested seats this year. Well, motorists traveling in rural Scottsbluff County are reminded of an extended road closure northwest of Scottsbluff starting this week. Scottsbluff County Roads and Bridge says starting tomorrow, County Road G will be closed between County Roads 19 and 20. This road closure will allow crews from Reichert Construction to replace a bridge in that area. Work is anticipated to continue until April 15th, depending on weather conditions and other factors.
To sum up the past 20 years in one word, exceptional. It's one of our core values. But our people have been truly exceptional. Our customer support has been exceptional. In 20 years, where will Allo be? When we started, we were just a business fiber company. Then the demand came from residential. Now the products of both business and residential just continue to expand. We've got to start with customers' needs and always work backwards. The customers will tell us and our teammates will take us there. Now the latest from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. Scotts Bluff Body and Paint, your driving home, our reputation. Plenty of postseason news and notes, plus some Cougar athletics with some upcoming games. Let's start from the weekend in Omaha as the state wrestling tournament wrapped up on Saturday evening. Four total gold medals for the region, including Scott's Bluffs, Chance Hauser at 126 and Gehring's Jordan Shirley at 132 in Class B. Shadron's Quinn Bailey became a two-time champion, winning at 157 in Class C. And there was a Class D title also with Cable Larson from Garden County. Gehring picked up six total medals, including Riley Luce and Haley Medina on the girls' side. Scott's Bluff medaled four overall. Mitchell earned three medals in Class C. Wyatt Reichenberg of Banner County, you saw that. He was a second-place silver medal winner, and there was also some standout efforts as well. Colby Houchin of Baird medaling, and there's a full rundown that you can find with links to all the results for Panhandle Kids. That's all available for you on the website. In basketball, the girls' B8 sub-district tournament starts tonight. It's just three teams and two total games spread out over tonight and tomorrow. Gehring plays Alliance tonight. That'll be at Scotts Bluff High School. We'll have that one on KMOR 93-3 starting with pregame at 545. Winner will play Scotts Bluff tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Boys' subs start tonight. The bulk of the C&D games tomorrow. And then the B8 sub, that'll be Wednesday and Thursday. The WNC CC baseball team off to a bit of a slow start record-wise right now. Just one in five in their first six. A couple of losses yesterday at Barton Community College in Kansas. The lone long ball on the day for the Cougars came from former Wesco Zephyr Hunter McCollum. McCollum did take the loss in the opener on the mound. The game two loss on the hill. That was Adrian Short. The Cougars playing twice more today at Barton before weekend home action against Miles Community College. That'll be Saturday and Sunday. And to close things out, it'll be tomorrow night, WNCC's Cougar Palace, a pair of big South Subregion games for the WNCC basketball teams at home against North Platte Community College. We'll have the broadcast with Chuck Schwartz. That'll be on KOLT tomorrow evening with pregame at 515. Women will play at 530, that men's game scheduled for about 730. That is the latest today from the Scotts Bluff Body and Paint Sports Desk. I'm Chris Cottrell. Culture trumps everything else. In my years, I've never worked for a company that treats people the way this one does. It is my passion for agriculture that brought me here in the first place, but not only that, there's a huge uh, family-oriented atmosphere within the 21st century equipment. I love working for 21st. They found something in me that I didn't know in myself. An intern to where I'm at now is such a great opportunity, and that is what this company is about. Take a look at your community calendar brought to you by Riverstone Bank.
The community calendar is brought to you by Riverstone Bank. We're local and we love our community. Platte Valley Bank, we want to help you take advantage of every adventure. We know you have plans, goals, and dreams. Let us help you with them. Whether you are just starting the business you have always imagined or looking to grow your existing one, we have a business loan to fit your needs. Stop in and see us at Platte Valley Bank and let us help make your dreams a reality. You belong here. Platte Valley Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And finally tonight, a Kino committee recommendation of a $3,500 grant to the High Plains Auto Club was given the green light last week by the Gearing City Council. Committee Chair Daryl Bentley told the council the funding will help pay for the annual Friday night barbecue for the Father's Day Classic Car Show. Bentley highlighted how the club has worked hard to build the event over the years. So with all the things going on, with the grass, we don't have to have you know, on concrete, a lot of car shows are on concrete, it's grass. Park department takes good care of things, has it ready. Um, <clears throat> motels are handy, civic center. So every one of you ought to be very proud of what Gearing represents to people that come here, like for the Father's Day Classic. 2024 will be the 25th anniversary of the car show, and Bentley noted this would be the 10th year that the city of Gearing has provided Kino funding to the event. The grant request was approved on a unanimous 7-0 to zero vote. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.